My son, you ate, my, you ate yeah. steak. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. eat steaks and like yeah. you know, and uh, you know, they just taken tobacco and and I was like, and they're like, and they're cigarettes, and I'm like, oh, I'm there. So yeah. uh, I did the, you know, I did the training, and um, I I got shot to a to a fire camp that was like 30 minutes from the pad. Right. You know and what I could tell you is um i ended up going to about nine different fire camps wow because um and i got really lucky mitch i got really lucky uh i got real comfortable there and i had a i had a captain that told me you know hey i'm not a cop so i'm not going to search your shit and i i when somebody tells me that i'm gonna take him at his word and, and what happened was, and for some reason, man, I thought I was on the streets again. Because here I am working every day. I'm seeing my kid on the weekends. Right. Like, this is the best my life's ever been. Right. And I'm not kidding. This is the best my life's ever been. And you're, and you're still in prison. And I'm in prison. But this is the best my life's ever been. Right. I'm starting to think, like, I'm a, I'm fucking, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a chain sawyer for Cal Fire. Right. And so when that, when that uh cdf guy or cal fire guy went into my sawyer bag and and took my last three cans of chewing tobacco yeah. i i uh the long and the short is i ended up grabbing him by his uh uh little backpack thing when yeah. he turned away from me because i went to talk to him about it he turned his back to me and 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 i didn't take a minute to go I'm a prisoner in, 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 in jail. Right. This guy has authority over me and, and I, this next decision I make could destroy the rest of my life. I didn't think about that. I just went, this guy just disrespected me. I spun him back around and he like went into the, into the, the cab thing. And I was like, didn't you ever fucking turn? You know I mean? I, I did all the things that I was taught to do. Right. Like I tried to intimidate him, I threatened him called him a piece of shit, told him he's a fucking liar, did this all in front of the crew, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm fucking from here, you fucking piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you don't take my fucking shit. Yeah, you <laughs> fucking you thief. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah you're right. It's contraband. That was the, at the end of the day, it was in a spot where he could find it, and that's right. my bad. But I didn't right. see it that way. Next thing you know, I'm on the next thing smoking. There was a bunch of situations like that that happened. I don't think I was, I lasted at a camp then for more than three months at right. any cycle. But since I'd already maxed out on my time, right? Like they can't give me more time. And you drop like 40 points a year at camp. Yeah. I never, they never took my camp program. Like I never did anything crazy. And it was honestly by the great, dude, I don't understand how I didn't get in more trouble than I did from yeah. when I, when I snatched him. Yeah. Um, and I, and I want to say it in like a kind of a, like, like I physically put hands on him. So basically you assaulted him. I assaulted him. And you, you know, know, it kind of reminds me of a situation like, there was a cop. He worked in my building occasionally when I was in Tracy, uh, and I was a cook. Curly? Huh? Curly? I was a cook, right? 
No, I said and, curling. No, not curling. So this cop, his name was uh, uh, Alden. I think his name was Alden. But there was a crew of cops there in Tracy that all rode motorcycles. Mm -hmm. The sergeant there, he kind of liked me, worked my wing, you know, and, and I used to bullshit with him. He kicked me down food. We are pretty good, you know. And uh, so this cop, I didn't like him. And he came up to me and he's like, hey, we're fucking around while, while I'm frying steaks. And he, he got right up on me and I pushed him. I pushed him hard. I basically socked him in the chest, which put and he and he and he got mad. And he goes, and he's like, I can fuck your day up. Whoa, whoa, whoa I know you're a lifer. And yeah. so this this northerner, I was a he was a cook also. He used to work on the grill next to me. He went and told the sergeant. He goes, hey, man, your boy's in trouble. He needs some help. And this cop had me in the office telling me how he could fuck my day up, blah, blah, blah. And I had assaulted him, basically. Yeah. That sergeant came in, told me, get out of the office. And I saw him in the, in the office pointing his finger in that guy's chest. You yeah. know. Sometimes, sometimes. I had assaulted that cop. Yeah, and I and it, so it. I used to tell I used to tell that story. Without the understanding of how stupid I was for doing that. Right? Yeah, yeah, the you gravity know gravity of it, right? Like I used to tell that story, like yeah, that fucking lame, like he didn't know who the fuck I was, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Nobody, nobody. Uh, man, I'm a I'm a drop in a drop in a drop of an ocean. Yeah. The biggest impact I can make in life is 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 in providing for a, my family. Right. Uh, being a good or a present father figure. That's that's the things like anybody can go send a fucking crash dummy to go stab somebody on a fucking yard. So after I mean, you did that, after you did that, did you did you kind of realize, hey, you know, I, I fucked up there. So, so no, I, I, it took me a minute. It took a while. Like the, the wife at the time with the raising the, the son by herself, how she was in a, in so, so how selfish of a thing I'd done. Right. So she only had to drive 30 minutes for her, for her son to see her, his dad. Right. right? Then it's and there was a bunch of other stuff that happened that I, I don't really need to get into. Like all of a sudden, like cops talk, cr uh, CDF guys talk. Like it got around what happened. I think, like he didn't really say what happened because it was kind of embarrassing. Right. right. But it gets around, right? Inmates talk. Uh, so when I went to the next camp, the second they had any interracial tension, I was rolled up. Because yeah. at this point, like, now I'm mad. I got a chip on my shoulder because I'm not being treated fairly. They're judging me because of my past, blah, blah, blah. I'm a big fucking victim. <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, and so whenever these guys on this, I mean, we're on a level one camp, bro. Right. And I got these fucking lames trying to politic. They don't right. even know what the fuck that is. Yeah, we should call them level two killers. Yeah. So yeah. So these guys, they, they would have these situations. And I'd go, you know what? I mean, why are we even talking about it? Why don't we get two picks and just go fucking murder everybody? Like, if yeah. you guys want to get busy, we got all the tools. Fire a chainsaw. Go cut that motherfucker's head off. <laughs> Tough guy? Yeah. Well, guard heard me yelling that in a white TV room calling everybody lames because they weren't doing shit. Yeah. And I just said, why, why don't you just suck up? The guard probably just heard that. He didn't hear the fact where I was just like, man, why can't you guys just fucking be here? Quit right. trying to politic, right? Because none of you are good at it. You're none right. of you are following rules. You're working out with this black dude, this black dude smoking cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like every rule that was ever there is gone. 
And you're breaking every rule in the yeah. Prison. You're breaking out all the fucking rules, and then you want to get busy because somebody got like their jaw broke for talking shit. Yeah. Fuck you. You know, I'm like, if you guys want to push it, then let's push it. Let's all pack our assholes and fucking get ready to go 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 to the back. You know, then let's do it. Outside of that, quit fucking trying because they don't want to come to me with their problems. Right. They would go, hey, hey, Thumper. Um, so you know this dude, and we need to and man, shut your, you know what I mean? And that's and I what had happened was enough of their whine and bullshit had built up, and then right. one you know one of the guards had walked by and they heard what they heard, and I'm not going to say I didn't say it because I did. I said a bunch of shit, and I'm on the next thing smoking. You know, and I'm up for review and they're, and they're trying to pull my camp program. And I'm like, look, man, like you guys are going to do what you're going to do. All I know is on this day. And I don't know when that day is going to be a door is going to open and you guys are going to say, hey, uh, Brandon, it's time to go home. Until yeah. then, I've got no fucking uh, issues. Uh, you know, around the same time, my grandmother, who had always loved me unconditionally, passed away. Oh, wow. And. uh she was she was a lot she was the mother figure in my life right and i and it and it something inside me broke um i still visit her grave regularly she gets all of my sobriety chips um she never got to see me become the man that i am today right and it that that had a that had a huge effect on the changes that I made when, when upon release, when I, when I, when I was released, what I could tell you is um, I ended up, I ended up paroling on December. I was supposed to parole like December 11th, but they paroled me, you know, the gate or the jet, you know, like high control parole. If your days on a Friday, guess what? You're not going home Friday. Go home Monday. Go home Monday. So I was like, why can't I go home Thursday? That seems a little bit more fair. But yeah. uh, no, they, you know, they paroled me. Uh, I went and saw my parole officer. Uh, she was like, you do not look like what this file is telling me. Yeah. Right. She's like, you're clean cut. Here's this beautiful wife. You know, it's, I mean, you're from this small little town. In the middle, you live in a gated community on a lake. Yeah. Like, I'm just not seeing this. And she goes, well, I mean, do you even have tattoos? And I'm like, I got like two, you know. And uh, she's like, okay. And she's like, well, where are they? And I go, I got one on my chest and I got one on my back. Because I have a full chest plate and a full back piece. That's what I was calling my two tattoos. Yeah. And uh, when she when she goes, well, I don't, I just don't see this. I don't see this person. She's looking at the C file, and and I go in for my photos, and she goes, oh, there's the duck. <laughs> she goes, you know, she usually if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, you know, it's a it's a duck. But I, you're not a duck. I don't see the duck. Yeah. And then you know, she my you take out, I took out my shirt, and there was there's all my affiliations, and there's you know there's everything that from the the tattoos that you earn i don't even know if they do that shit anymore but like the, the the things that that used to mean something to me which don't i mean and i'll just be honest man none of that shit means anything to me anymore it really doesn't i mean at the end of the day there's there's a lot of character defects that i still suffer from because of it's really hard for me to let go of some of that mentality. Yeah. Um, there's some things that can trigger old behavior with me, but at the end of the day, I mean, somebody would have to be threatening my, my, my existence or my family to get me to, um, to get me to, to, to get to a place where uh, there'd be no turning back. I, I would, I would think, I don't know. I had some idiot in a Tesla doing something the other day that tested my patience. <laughs> well, if you're on a motorcycle and somebody tests the rear end and you tailgating you, it's kind of upsetting. It does. <laughs> <It's>, <clears throat> I used to carry the half inch wrenches and I would just throw them over my shoulder. Uh, you know, porcelain's good too. Um, yeah. 
So you got out of the joint, you got a pro officer that doesn't really see your past in you, but then she sees your tattoos. Yes. Had a couple of hurdles, had a couple of hurdles there. Right. Uh, you know, uh, one of them was a hard, was a hard hurdle. Uh, I, so I, I got out of the joint and, uh, I had my had my driver's license was like non-existent. It's it's completely revoked until I go do a bunch of DUIs. Um, I think it's important to to list the offense that 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 I ended up doing the nine uh, flat for. It was a DUI with great bodily injury uh, where someone was significantly hurt. And at the end of the day, was I was just a selfish person that drank, and I never. Uh, whether I was driving, coming from work, going from work, or anything like that, I never thought about anyone else uh, in my behavior. It was just about right. me. And right. so um, probably if I would have gotten less time, like a four- or five-year term on this, I would I would probably still be doing terms. Right. I, I look at it as it was a life-changing event for me. Um, and and something broke inside me where I no longer wanted to participate in this anymore. I was right. I, I saw that I was throwing away my life. I saw that the people pulling the strings were full of shit. Um, so, so when you were in the joint, all the big prison gang guys were still locked up in the shoe. Yeah, they've been they they've been slammed from the beginning of like when I hit ninety four. Yeah, they were already they were already in the shoe. Uh, NLR got pulled in in like ninety nine. So you had guys on yards like in Salinas and whatever. Like some guy would say, "Hey, I got the keys to the yard." We had sleepers. Hey, we had sleepers. We just didn't you didn't talk about it. Like if you thought somebody was something, you didn't say anything. You didn't talk about it. <laughs> but most of the guys that say they got the keys on I got the keys from the fellas. They don't even yeah. know who the fellas are. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't know. And they want the keys to the yard so they could tell dummies what to do and basically get free shots of dope. That's it. 100%. Yeah. So you started seeing this stuff kind of – so basically what you're saying is you started – being honest with yourself Correct. and saying, Hey, these guys are basically fucking turds and all the shit that propaganda, whatever the fuck you want to call it, all the stuff they put out on the yard for guys to abide by. They don't abide by. No, they don't. And they don't it's bullshit. Yeah, they, they not only don't abide. So look at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, out here, everybody's hunting money, putting in work to get money and power, right? Money and power runs out here in there. It's just different currency, okay? Money and power in there is an entertainment, is other people's lives, dope, money, I mean, currency. Uh, if you're not going to, if it, it, I mean, it, it's just, it really, it's power, man. And, 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 you know, and how they get that power is fear, you know, intimidation, things like that. There's still guys, there's still guys. I got a, I had a friend of mine that, uh, you know, he, he just got a shamrock man and he's fucking doing 190 years of life now for a double murder inside. And it's, and it's unfortunate, but what I can tell you about this, I'll just call him an associate of mine is that he's always wanted to be that dude. Yeah, and that's it's just sad, man. At that point, because I mean, Mitch, we were talking about this the other day, that like, yeah, man, sure, there's a bunch of guys out there doing turd shit. Okay, I was a half a step away from being a piece of shit myself because I was just using the tools that I that that like they started teaching me as soon as I hit fucking juvenile hall. Right, right. Intimidate, manipulate. Lie. If yeah. if you can't be it, pretend that you're that dude. You know what I mean? I, I and you see it all the time. Like you you'd meet this guy 
and he's all right. You know, he does tattoo work and shit like that. And his name's Tex and he's from, but he's from, but he's from SAC, right? Okay. But his name's Tex. And then like, and then he paroles and then you transfer to another joint. And now his name's, uh, you know, hat trick from Modesto. And it's like, you know, dude, what the fuck? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you. How many animals do you got, bro? Like, did you yeah. burn it up that quick? And it's, and it, you know, that's a, that's the tools that that dude was taught. So that yeah. dude was taught that, like, to go, you go in there, you you run up a debt, you pick a target, and you boom. Well, yeah. Well, since you brought that up, you know, I I remember, uh, you know, like in Donovan, you know, guys were running up drug debts, drug debts, drug debts. And then um, there was a white crip on the yard. Yeah. I interviewed him, Snow Rock. And so he was on the yard for quite a long time. And I remember some guys, they were skinheads. And they said, uh, who's got the best weed on the yard? And they go, oh, Snow Rock. You know, yeah. then all of a sudden when they owed him two or $3,000 um, and another white crip showed up. Oh, we can't have that. You know, they had a riot and, you know, everybody's drug debts are gone. Yeah. Because hey, now they're all hey. old and shipped off to other prisons. If they, are, if they already let it slide, if they, once they showed yeah. up, right, and they yeah. saw the white grip was there, yeah. probably the only reason that they didn't get busy, and let's just be honest, because Snow Rock had some hands. Snow Rock's got hands. Yeah, uh, and they didn't, nobody, look, man. Why do you not talk? Sh so why do you not talk shit to a punk? Nobody wants to get beat up by a punk. Yeah. Well, in Donovan too, there was a punk there named Joanne. He was a Mexican. <laughs> um, you know, he had titties, all that shit. He had a, his cell. He was from LA Death Squad. He was another South Sider guy. But um, somebody disrespected this punk on the yard in his cell. He goes, "Hey, you can't put up with that shit." And and I see. He had a big fucking rusty piece. He went out to handball court and stabbed the shit out of the guy that was talking shit to him. Yeah. And titties, you know? Yeah. And so, that guy will never let, that guy will forever be the <laughs> dude that got stabbed on a handball court with a rusty ass nail, tits flopping by the dude. I was a I bone can't. crusher, bro. Yeah. With, you can't, yeah. you can't come back from that one. Yeah. There's not enough I've had work. A <laughs> yeah so i mean it's it's and that's that's getting into the politics a little bit but like yeah. so that's just common sense right to me and you it's common sense look yeah. if the dude's there and he's been established right yeah you can't go you, like you're accepting it you've yeah. accepted it you can't well to me um you know snow rock told me like i used to stand behind that guy in a chow line he was from san diego i'm from san diego you know yeah. But uh, you know, you go to Chow. There's a couple hundred guys in line. You know, going to Chow. I would stand behind him, and I'd get up on him real close. You know, I I had no problem. I kind of liked him. I thought I respected him. I interviewed him. I he's a good dude. But anyways, uh, I would get right up on him, and and just stand there. You know, just and he a hey, he would not like look over his shoulder. He would just stand there, kick it. He, he, he wouldn't back look to see who was behind him. Yeah. The dude was not scared. Yeah. Had an open policy. He said, anybody wants to get him up, my door's open. I'll fight anybody, anytime. I like those kind of people. I mean, how can you not respect that? Yep. He, but yep. he told me, he goes, hey, you're the plumber, right? And I go, yeah, I'm the plumber. He goes, will you fix my water? I go, yeah, sure. So I went up to, you know, you've been a prince, so his water came out like this far. I'm in barely, almost no water. Yeah. So I fixed it. And uh, that night he goes, he goes, hey, <laughs> you fixed my water. I go, yeah. He goes, what do you want? He, he wanted to pay me. He had a big weed sack. I go, I don't want yeah. nothing. I don't want nothing. That's my job. And I went to the shop and I go, you guys are a bunch of fucking punks. If you don't like that guy, go stab him. But don't make him go without water. Yeah. I was, you know. Yeah, so he was all right as long as they, their credit was good, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah there's, there's just a bunch of, I mean, it, the whole thing's work, man. If, if, you know, if I could go back in time and, and me now, right. So I've, I've been out and I, I could actually probably go through the last 13 years pretty easily. Um, I got yeah. out, uh, that same woman that I was married to, she did that term with me, got out, um, had a couple kids with with her. Tried tried really hard to like do um, her program. Her program was she was Mormon, which means like once you get married, that's like forever. Oh, um, yeah. I had I had some hard I had, I had some really hard things happen. Uh, one of the guys from that from that and I, I went every Sunday, man. I got dressed up in a white shirt and a tie, and I went there and I held my kids and I and I did it. And I was a part of that. And there was, so this is, this is what I've learned. There was structure there. Yeah. Okay? There was accountability. There was all the things, there was love. There was friendships, all the things that I'd wanted before when I, when I, when I went into a negative environment and I got them doing negative things, I found them doing positive things. Right. right. All of a sudden I'm this success story and everyone wanted to be my friend because they saw that I was a decent human being and they were able to see past a lot of the, 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 the scars and stuff that I had. Um, right. I had, I had a friend of mine. He's still my friend. I actually, I, I genuinely, this guy's my friend. Um, he's a, uh, he's a, he's an alcohol, uh, like undercover ABC dude. Right. And he like, he's like, he's like legit ABC guy. And he's like undercover dude. Right. So he goes to bars and shit and like tries to bust narcotic. It's a fucking weird, man. Like this guy would like become my friend, but he was like this family man. Right. And, uh, and it was kind of a trip, like getting to know this guy and like me having my beliefs, like all cops are, bastards like i was just like all of you are you're a piece of shit you yeah. know or like look at how you violate everybody's rights and he and he would go he he would tell me and he would go like i don't he goes um he goes he would go what was the thing he used to tell me he go you know how many skinheads are just fucking just like needle nazi piece of shit child molested blah blah you know what i mean and i'd go hey motherfucker that it and he goes so he goes, I'm a good dude. You know, he might be right. And he, and he, he might be right, you know? Um, and so uh, I'm not going to blow his name out there because there was a time we were out riding motorcycles, dirt bikes, and, uh, and he'd lost his service pistol while he was out there. Oh, wow. And so I'm out there in the desert on high control parole. You find it here, bud. Here's your here's your Glock. Oh wow! He knows I'm on. He knows I'm on high control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's that's. I mean, and so you know, life changed. Um, yeah. Life changed. Life changed for the good. And, and and you know what I can tell you is, and I and I've seen it happen a lot is is I wasn't okay, and I wasn't able to recognize complacency for peace. I was, I was used to that high stress environment. And so what happened is just over time, I started um, seeking things that reminded me of that, started getting involved in like the 1% world. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, re regrettably, you know, uh, for myself, not as an overall uh for myself, it wasn't a good fit, uh, and and I and I you know I have some I have some opinions on it, um, but I think they're singular they're singular you, in nature. You got into motorcycles. Yeah. All right. No, I no, I mean I you know I got into that with that one percent community where they start with the, I guess the word for it is like you know shopping, right? Like oh yeah. 
this dude's like me and blah 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 blah. Joined a little, you know. Wait, so so like the acceptance that you found like in the illegal activity and a criminal element and in prison mm -hmm. by you know participating in all the behavior that goes on in prison. Sometimes we uh you know myself included um it's very attractive. I grew up around bikers. I grew up around bikers. I grew up around motorcycle clubs. That's always been my thing. But, and so I know some of them guys. I really like them. I respect them. They've been to prison, the yeah. ones that I know. And, but it, it's an attractive environment for guys that, that, that like that type of camaraderie camaraderie it's like hey we're bad motherfuckers and we love each other and that's some of the the, the it's a feeling it's a it's a there's a feeling and one of the ways i can describe it is doing 115 on the freeway right in a pack and blowing past a chp and not slowing down yeah that is powerful okay yes. yeah that that for me that for me was one of my biggest high like that for me I was like that piece yeah. of, that punk right you know what I mean like he, yeah. he don't want he don't want none right and, <laughs> okay yeah. um, you know what I can tell you is uh, I didn't remember the lessons that I learned from being inside right. And at 38 years old, I ended up with a needle in my arm. Oh, wow. Because when, uh, when, you know, I'm hanging out with the fellas. Okay. And we're, and we're going around and we're, and we're like handing out the stuff for like the, the, the toy drive for Christmas or the spring fling or any of that shit. Right. And they're like, Hey, do you want to, you want to, you want to, you want some, I'm like, want some? yeah, you want, you want some slow or you want some fast. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I've, now I want to be, what, what I want to do is I want to present them and I want them to see every, every violent thing I've ever done. How, 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 you know what I mean? I'm, I'll never tell on anybody, even if it means I'm going to do twice as much time or all my life or whatever. Like, I want them to see this version that I've created that's just the, you know, like, that's up, like, bigger and badder than them, right? Like, I want to be like, uh, like, you don't even know, like, how, and at the end of the day, man, like, uh, uh, the things that were still fucked up with me ended up, it, well, you know, one of the things that ended up is like, uh, you know, once, once once it kind of got around that, like, you know, I was having issues with substance abuse, like that don't fly. Right. right? So then these, these friendships and one of them was a, was a friendship I had. I mean, me and this dude drank off the same sippy cup, right? This dude was my brother. Yeah. I lost that friendship and, and that uh, probably that's pretty much that would probably ended my substance abuse because once I lost his friendship, it, uh, you know, that's, that that and it was so i used to blame their club right or 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 him or you know and then what happened is it's just time goes on and you start to be honest with yourself right you like you go like all right so like your behavior wasn't okay and you and you couldn't be in that kind of mindset and and um and what you were doing is you were you were actually putting other people in harm's way because you were being loose. Right. And so it was probably, you know, I would I'm not gonna say that you know it was a hard decision for him because well, you I, know, substance abuse is very selfish behavior. It is. You turn into you turn into one of the most selfish, self-seeking yeah. individuals that right. you could be. And you know, at the end of the day, Mitch is is I think I believe I found some balance in my life where I have, I have, I have the family setting and, and that I had before. Right. 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 I, I have, I have a strong work ethic and right. then I have brothers that I go ride with 
that aren't tied to anything. Right. But yet we keep each other accountable, which so, is one of the things that I was so, kind of missing. So you recognize, man, your substance abuse was a problem. Oh, without, I mean, I, I, I say that I'm an addict because the things that I was addicted to long before substance abuse was, um, like I said, the, the, you know, the violence of it, the power, the manipula the manipulation was a big one. Like yeah. thinking that I'm pulling people, like that I'm in control, pulling strings. Yeah. Yeah. So what you realize that you had, you know, we have addictive personalities, uh, your substance abuse is a problem, right? Yeah. You know, substance abuse also um, destroys your personality and it destroys your moral value. Your, your, you know, your baseline beliefs kind of start eroding. You start compromising things that you believe in, right? Yeah. And, and so, I mean, it's just a bad, it's a bad, you know, in the program, they say, you know, it leads to jails, institutions, and death, all negatives. That's where substance abuse, it doesn't lead to those three things because it's a good thing. It leads to those things because if you use substance abuse, my thing was crank, you know? Yeah, that was my, that was my, that was my, that was my, it wasn't, well, it was, it was never crank that I knew. I never knew crank. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never knew crank. I never knew crank, but it, it, like for me, for me, Mitch, honestly, it was like the, the, this is how ridiculous it is. <clears throat> so something gets put in front of me, okay? And whatever they call it, the clear stuff, meth or whatever yeah. it is, yeah, right? I, whatever. This is, how, this is this is how much of a this is how much my ego and that selfishness gets involved. And I want you to, don't laugh, okay? So it's like, hey man, go ahead and have a bump. Well, like, dude, don't you know I've been to prison? Like, find me a point. Never shot in my life. Yeah, I'm one of those because that's how that's how I've seen all my my comrades in there get down. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the that's the the like, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pretend that I know what I'm doing, and hopefully I don't die. Yeah, yeah. See, I was always that you know because I grew up around that shit. I was just talking to somebody today who's in a club, and I said, you know, I knew the rules when I was a kid, you know. So those rules, even though I never got in a bike club, but those rules probably saved my life because I never shot dope. Yeah. Because it's against the rules. Well, I'm, I'm, so I, I didn't even know that rule. I'm trying to show off. Yeah. And so like, whoa, no, 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 no. Because I'm a fucking every all in or not or not. Yeah. I would have been a dope shooter. I probably would have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I'm about, you know what, man? By the grace of God, I'm here. Yeah. By the yeah. grace of God, I'm here. So what was, uh, so it sounds like, you know, you kind of started waking up, then you slid back into, a, you know, it, motorcycle outlaw shit. On the surface, for some guys, I mean, there's guys that get involved with that lifestyle, never get arrested. They don't fuck with drugs. They don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't. I would say like, I, a, a, like a, like a, like uh, a, it's just, it's the outlaw thing, but it's not prison. It's not, yeah. You know I mean? It's, it's different. two different. So it's two different worlds. Right. It's 100% two different worlds. It's it's complete separate politics. What I can say is I had a master's degree, if not a doctorate, in prison politics. Yeah. And I wasn't in the motorcycle community long enough to be to even really be able to speak on it. And that would be my most honest uh that that's and that's actually taken me a long time to be able to to understand that. Sure. Yeah. I had the bottom rocker. Sure, I had a back piece. Sure, I, I was a three-piece patch holder. Sure, I've been an officer. I hadn't been in that world long enough. Yeah. Okay. To even be able to to understand, I, you know, I'll, I'll ride till the day I die. Yeah. But I'm. But I'm. The point was like for guys been to prison. You've been a street gang. You've been prison politics, prison shit, right? Yeah. That, that outlaw mentality. That, 
that whole it's enticing. Yes, no, it, it is. Seems a lot different than prison shit. You know what I mean? I thought it would be more. So this is this was my perception was I thought it was going to be a lot more prisony, right? <laughs> like yeah. felonies every other day. You know what I mean? Like, like that, just, that just doesn't make for a good longevity for any club, right? If you're out there yeah. doing felonies every other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was my, you know, and that's, so I, it was, um, I mean, the best way that I've, that I've looked at it was that, or the best, the way that I can look at it now with like full transparency was just like when I was a kid, I was looking for something. I, I, the camaraderie, I think was the, was the attraction because I even missed that in the camaraderie that I found inside was with some select solid people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, you end up with like life or death situations. There's these bonds that get formed. And I miss right. that. Right. What, what, what I'd done was I took, I took for granted the peace that was a blessing, had no idea. And I, and I actually, it was, it was probably, I want to say it was like three years ago. It might've been two and a half years ago. I went to our friend, Brian. Yeah. And I, I drove I rode over to his house and I went, Hey, Hey, Brian. Um, Hey man, can I start hanging out with you? I said, uh, I, I really struggle with, with, with who I associate with. I'm, I'm very particular with the individuals that, that, that I let into my like little bubble. Right. And, and I'm like, they need to be solid. They can't, they can't be turds, man. Like that, like I don't need them to be killers or, you know I mean? If you are cool, man, just like, don't, you, you can't like, cause, cause I hold my, my friends up. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no lames allowed. Yeah. No lames allowed, man. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I, and I, but I tried to do it in a real humbly thing. Cause I was like, look, man, because, cause, cause I need that accountability from men I respect. Yeah. That, that's kind of like, you know how we had there, we had our rules in there, man. And, 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 and I do really good with that. You well, know, you know, like, you know, like some fucking lame meet you, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because you work with him, you meet him at the swap meet, whatever. Yeah. Um, He's going to respect you because he's fucking scared of you and he's a fucking lame. Yeah. Right? Or he wants to be like you or whatever. But when you meet someone who's been through the fucking meat grinder, he's been through the acid test, the same experiences that you've been through and he meets you and he likes you and he respects you. That's a, that's a genuine. And, and, you know, I know the person you're talking about and, He's a friend of, of ours, and, um, you, you know, he has a similar experiences with motorcycle clubs and prison and drugs and the whole. And, and, and so I understand why you reached out to him. And so well, and it was it, it was it was uh, it was for me, it was a point of or it was a, it was a point of humility to realize that if I didn't if I didn't surround myself with people that I respected, that right. were good men that weren't that that had stopped doing the things that we used to do and right. was on like a different path. And that didn't make him so that was the, that was like kind of my thing was like he's he's I think I think he's one of the strongest guys that I know, right? Like I like there's nothing about him, even though he's he's kind, he's he's loving, he's he's this, he he's just always trying to better himself or show kindness or just like, like, man, we were, we had like kids, like when we were parking and stuff on our bikes, he was like inviting families to sit on our bikes while so they could take pictures on them and stuff. And I'm like, these people have no idea the animals that we used to be. Yeah. And the fact, and the fact that they, um, that they, you know what I mean? Like they're that, that we can, that we can actually, and I'm, and I'm not saying step down. What I mean is like, cause, cause bro, 
we're, when I say animals, I mean like we had very little social skills. Right. We, we're we're stepping up to where to their level by by being kind and like talking with them, like ca- talking to complete strangers. Man, it was um, that's the kind of things that I want to like pass on. Like I'm not trying to pass on any of the like any of the the garbage that I was fed to my children. Right, right. I'm, uh, sometimes it slips out, and I, and I, and I, and it, and it, and it needs to not. Yeah, needs, you know, what I mean that that thing needs to be broken with me. You know, um, when you see guys have been through it, and they, you know, like, like I said, you know, like drugs destroy your personality. They destroy. Yeah. They destroy every. They destroy your compassion, and so. When, when you meet someone uh, who used to sell drugs, use drugs, uh, abuse people, would, had no compassion for anyone, maybe some guys around him, you know, and, and I, I know someone that, that Brian knows who's, who's still in a motorcycle club and he's very, and he's a solid, good, yeah. you know, you see these guys now and they're like, oh, excuse me, you know, and they see a yeah. city. A citizen, I mean someone is a citizen, yeah. and they're they're polite and respect, open the door for them and hey, can I help you, sir? Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. we went that shit. We were at the bottom run of society, and now we're just normal fucking people. Yep. Maybe even above normal, maybe even above Joe Citizen, you know. It's, I, I mean, to go through that, to go through some of the, some of the fires and stuff and come out and, and be able to look at it honestly. Right. And not, cause there's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I, well, I know for a fact for me, there was times when I looked at it differently in order to get through it. Yeah. Right. I looked at it in a way of, with the tools I had. And I and I'm and I try to be really non-judgmental, really with anybody because I don't know the tools they're working with and I don't know their story. Well, you know, part of the negative that we used to live in was, um, you know, sitting in a fucking day room in prison and going, blah 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 blah, with the guy that was sucking on your ass because he thought, you know, whatever, taking inventory on people. Yeah. No, All sitting the- around. Sitting around and who's gonna get stabbed? Yeah, because that's a piece of shit because of this, and that guy's a piece of shit because of that. Yeah. And and now the inventory is, you know, man, I really feel sorry for that guy because he's going through this. Or, you know, hey, that guy's a great guy, man. You know what that guy's overcome, or it's a whole it's a 180, you know. It's, it's- just it was a it was a lot of time wasted, but there's a lot of good that we can do with with um, with the experiences that we were able to push through. Right. You know, one of the things one of the things when I when I look at your story is that um, like whatever I'm going through, I just just keep pushing, man. Yeah, just keep, keep pushing. So I don't, you, know, I don't know the end of the chapter, you know. Yeah. So when you reached out, um, what was the uh, What's your response and the outcome to that? I mean, with Brian? Yeah, when he reached out to Homeboy, like, hey, you know. Uh, so, so, um, so it kind of went like, you know, he, he was like, oh man, I've been watching you, you know, and uh, he's like, man, you can go, you can go riding with us at any time. But I, you know, what I thought was that I would have a lot more time, and so, uh, why I, I missed the first desert ride uh, for work. And then I missed the second year desert writing for work. And then this was going to be the third year. And I'm like, I don't care what it means. I shut my whole business down. And what I could tell you is like, you know, we got to sit there. We got to sit there. And that was actually a, a crazy, some crazy events out there, like with the weather. But <laughs> like we got to sit there and, um, I mean, these are guys 
these are all these are all guys that society had thrown the key away on. Right. They they would have never they they had judged us for our behavior, right? They weren't wrong, you know, at the time or whatever. Well, there are people that um society figured that they're better off just throwing us away. Correct. Correct. And um through through both probably God's intervention and 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 hard work and patience and and honestly looking at ourselves and then honestly making and, the decision and true genuine camaraderie yeah we were sitting around fires and taking in some of the most beautiful you know, like desert scenery and just you know that was that for me was um you know and then Jimmy did some weird shit with some sage yeah, uh, yeah, Jimmy. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not saying like weird shit. Like, I genuinely felt different after that. Like some weird buzzing, you know, going on. And uh, it was. Um, I've been meaning to make that trip. And uh, you know, I talked to one of those men daily. Yeah. Which is what. Which is what. I I needed. I, so, I need that. So, just for context for you guys watching, um, there's a group of us. Most, all of us have been in prison, out of Sacramento. I live in Placerville, which is close to Sacramento. So, they ride through the desert every year in February. So, I got off parole, and you know, bow tie, right? Bow tie tells me. Uh, so, me and him were in juvenile hall together. Did you know that? Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> it's a small world. I go, what do you mean? He goes, we're riding Arizona. It's going to be fucking epic. You want to yeah. go? I go, well, I don't know, you know. So I told my wife, and she goes, if you don't go, you're going to regret it. I had a yeah. dine, had a stock seat, forward controls, you know, whatever. And so I, Bowtie tells Brian, hey, you know, I got a guy who wants to go. I had met Brian at this motorcycle swap meet a few times. You know, got to know him. And he goes, oh, the ride's full. And he goes, oh, man, this guy, you know, he just got a pro. He goes, I can go next year. You know, the ride's full. Yeah. And he goes, man, this guy was a lifer, you know. And, and and Brian goes, who is it? And he goes, Mitch. He goes, bring him. And yeah. uh, so I went, this is my third, so three years ago, third, you know. Yeah. Uh, we did, I, I did 3,400 miles on that diner with him. It was eight of us, and uh, 34. We only did 27 this year. Well, also, we watched Anthony crash, that was kind of scary, yeah. Um, so, eight of us did that time. And when you spend 10 days, two weeks, uh, 3,400 miles on the road with guys, you, you it's an experience, you know. Yeah. And and it's a uh, it's a bond building experience, you know. It's it's and it and it's uh, especially when all the guys have been through the, the negative shit. Now they're on the positive shit. Um, you build bonds with guys that are they're on the right track in life, you know. And it just it's done it nothing. Is- it, it, it's, it's enriched my life, you know. This, you know, and this is the one thing that I can, you know, what I can say about our group, right, is is we might go like a week or something, right? We might go a week without anything being on the thread, and then it'll yeah. go like pop, 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 and then just everybody starts waking up, you know, to it and stuff. And Yeah, we uh, have a group. We have a group text that we yeah. Yeah. And that's I, that's what I love I love to see I love to I love to know that you know is that we're there for each other yeah. you know and uh, you know that and when you say that you know like um, you know my mom died a couple of years ago and about a year year and a half ago and you know guys are like hey man uh, you know I had to have my mom you know uh, cremated and stuff. And guys are like, Hey, I got, I'm going to, I'm going to Venmo you some money for this. And I go, I got it. And I go, they go, that's what we do. Yeah. That is what we do. That, that's what we do. Yep. And I, I, you know, it kind of put me in tears, you know, because not just because my mom had passed away, but because 
I had met these guys who've been through the shit I've been through and they got their life on, on the right track. And it's like, that's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do now. We're out here. Uh, <laughs> As Chris Smith always says, or yeah. Uh, yeah. We're out here. We're yeah. out here doing what nobody thought we could do. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, with, 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 in in intent on yeah. get doing what we're doing yeah you know? and it's it, and it's not um you know when when you get your life on track and you're doing things right um you meet other people along the way that are also doing things it's it's not <clears throat> it's not because i'm scared to go to prison it's not because uh you know i'm trying to Con somebody out of just because that that's just what we do, mm -hmm. you know. There's no other reason other than it, it's what we do, you know. So I, there's a um, there's and, and it's it's a little bit of philosophy is um that negative when you're in a negative environment and stuff, all it can do is breed more negativity. I've never seen positivity come out of negative, negative, negative unless someone's perception turns that negative thing and they go, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to focus on the positive of that. And then you see them escape situations, right? The right. same thing with when you're in these positive um, mindset and thinking and like, okay, well, you know, if that doesn't work, then something else will in your solution base. Yeah. The doors, man, the fucking doors open up. People are more receptive. Right. Um, I mean, I'm I'm pretty much covered in tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's not at least no one's ever said like when they first look at me, like, oh my gosh, you've been to prison. Like they don't say that anymore because I don't really bring it up. Right. That's, that was a that was something for a long I think when we first met. I was working on that when we, when we were going to go down to Sears point or Infinian and go to the bagger races. Yeah. I went to bagger. Race. Yeah. Yeah. Bagger races. I, I was like, you know, I was like something my aunt said to me, which was really bugging me. She's like, Brandon, I said, she's like, you've been out 10 years. This was three years ago. She's like, you've been out 10 years and you can't get through a day without talking about the dude you were inside or that you've been there or yeah. that blah, 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 blah. She goes, you need to, you're not that dude anymore. Right. You're not. She goes, I need you to see that and believe that, that you're no longer that man. You're yeah. not. And she's all, and that's not like, you're not weaker. You're not, I mean, she's all, you're fucking older. That's for sure. But you're not, you are not. you're not, you're not, it's not a weaker thing. You've, you've grown. You're developing into somebody that like society is grateful to have man yeah and that's a powerful thing because you you know what we can do mitch is that these guys or or men that are struggling the way we were right before we got cracked right we can be that guy that throws that arm out and goes hey man there's a different way and it ain't the one that you're thinking right and that's you know um when I got found suitable for parole, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I flushed a quarter ounce of crank down the toilet in 1997 in courtroom prison, and, and I said, fuck it, I'm done. But, um, you know, what? when I went to board, uh, but I still never thought I was going to get out of prison. I just yeah. decided I have two ways to go. I can go to, I can fucking <laughs> shit and end up in the shoe forever. Or I can get my points down to a kickback prison, just do my artwork, enjoy my music, and just live. Yeah, and that's the route I took. But so when I got found suitable for parole, um, the the parole board member had gone, worked his way up through the system, became a warden. Uh, he came out and he goes, he, he goes, guys like you are our biggest asset. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you got a story to tell, and I want you to tell it. And he goes, if you can ever come back in these prisons, I want you to come back in here and tell these guys in here your story if you'd like to. And 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 that's kind of why I do this this 
this program, uh, this channel, because, uh, you know, there's guys out there. I was 17 years old when I went to prison and I was 56 when I got out. Um, there's guys that are 17 years old that don't need to fucking go to prison for 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. You need to realize, man, that, that they don't have to do that. You know, no. they no. don't no. Have to do that. Life is fucking hard. Even now, life, for is, you hard. I, life is difficult. Yeah. Life's but hard. When you're 17, life's difficult, but there's guys who are not 17. They're 25, 35, 45. That'll help you figure it out. Yeah, I, I would I would say the last the last. So I've been out since 2010. I'm coming up on 13 years out. Right. And it has been hard. Right. The time in the joint was easy. It's a controlled environment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I didn't I didn't vote when I was in there. I didn't go on vacations. Pay taxes. Right? I didn't pay taxes. I mean, the, the highest pay number I had, I think, was an IDL job, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> dollar, dollar yeah. ten an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not hard. Everything's provided for you. Right. You're like one of the toughest things that you can do. You know. You know what's. You know what was a really tough thing that I, that I learned how to do. It was really tough for me, and I still struggle with it. Being patient with my kids. Yeah. You know, understanding that they're just tiny little human beings and trying to figure stuff out. You know what? I can I can do a lot of fucking damage. Sure. By like what I say and and how I respond to things. Right. So what I what I try to do is I try to give my kids a different environment than the one I grew up in. Right. My home is a safe place, man. Like like uh when you were over here, like Lily's sitting here and she's She's showing you artwork and stuff, and she's like into artsy stuff. And yeah. uh, she was like, when I told her I was coming out to see you, she was like, "Tell Mitch I said hi," yeah. you know. And, and uh, man, I, I wouldn't throw away the opportunities I have now. That's that's one of my, the biggest. I mean, that's that for me with having kids, you know. And uh, when when I had the kids, something changed a little bit. Not being able to, not being able for my grandmother, or at the time, I didn't think that my grandmother would be able to see, you know, the free version of me, right? right. But she does. I mean, you know, I, I believe so. She does. She sees what I'm doing. Yeah. She's happy, you know. Uh, you know, it's just keeping that, that, that changing the mindset, man. You can have the world absolutely shitting on you, okay? Like yeah. absolutely taking a dump on you. And all it is, is it's, it's life. Just, just adjust to it, man. Like it's not always going to shit on you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's to keep you from doing something that, that wouldn't, that's not on your path. Like I'm grateful for every single thing that I've gone through. It's made, it's yeah. gotten me to right here, right here. We are the grand sum of all our experiences. Exactly. And so, you know, 38 years of prison that I have a I I don't know. I put myself in a position in life where that's what I got and that's what I had to deal with. And it made me who I am right now. Yeah. And what you've gone through has made you who you are now. And, um, you know, young guys out there, even young girls, whatever, um, uh, you know, especially guys growing up in the hood, you know, white guys got hoods of their own, you know, just, uh, yeah, we're just skinnier. Yeah. You know, you got the most fat, you know, and it's not easy, you know? Yeah. For a white no, guy there or, you know, it's just, it's just as hard as a guy living in South Central. Um, there's a way up, you know, Absolutely. there's a way up that's not going to jeopardize your future. You know, um, yeah, there's there's always there's always a window of opportunity, and 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 there's got to be able to be patient. It out, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was when I paroled, I I was living in South Central. Um, you know, I lived like two blocks away from where the Rodney King riots started. We're the only white guys in the neighborhood, so my I got in a motorcycle accident, and I worked at a job readiness program and my boss was an old school black dude and he goes uh 
take your motorcycle down and see Twin Mac, man. I go, who the fuck's Twin Mac? He goes, you got a holly <laughs> shop. Man. And uh, so he sent me down this motorcycle shop, and and uh, the guy that owns it, runs it, his name's Twin. It's uh, it, and it's in it's in Crenshaw, black area, black bikers, and and he was like. And he told me the fact he goes, he goes, he goes, that guy that sent you down here raised me. And he goes, he didn't raise me in the house, he raised me on the streets. So that guy ended up with a motorcycle shop. And he and he goes, for that guy to send you here to me means a lot. You know, and he treated me right and he helped me out in my situation with my bike. Um, so my point is. That older black dude helped that younger black dude get his shit together in life. He has a legitimate business. He has a good life. Good. It doesn't matter what race you are. That dude happened to be black. If you're having a rough fucking time out there, there is there. <clears throat> there's people out there that'll help you get it together. You know, like, they don't have to go down the same road that you and I went down. down you I, know? I got a guy. I got a guy. So similar, uh, not well, similar in the fact that I can recognize that he's struggling. Okay, he's a guy that we, that we sometimes use in, for for the company that we we do we do landscape designs and stuff like that. So we have we have an electrician, and uh, you know, I heard from one of my customers that you know he was there until two o'clock in the morning, working underneath their house with a headlamp on. And similar, you know, uh, just working, you know, not showing up until one in the afternoon, and then you know, like taking five hours to do something that should take 10 minutes. Yeah. Just, you know, uh, and, and it, what it was is that I started to recognize behavior. Right. So in a caring way, and, I, and, and sometimes it's hard to find out how to do that, right? Right. Um, what I let them know is, is I, said, I said, look, man, like, so your Monday through Friday is work. Your weekends are starting to bleed into your Monday through Fridays. Right. If you're struggling, and I'm saying this because I could recognize it. I used to struggle. We don't need to get into the things uh, like all that and what it looked like. But what I can tell you is I can, I can recognize it, and I'm not trying to shame you over it. What I'm trying to say is, look, I want to help you because I recognize and I see a pattern, and, and you're going to be signing up for some shit that you ain't ready to pay. You know, right now it's just, it's just messy. You know what I mean? It's just a little sloppy. Right. And, and, and I can, I can tell you what it looks like. Cause I can, <laughs> I was there. Um, and, and so s somewhat receptive, right? Like he didn't say like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. right? What he said was, he goes, yeah, man, you know, like, you know, things have been rough and I'm like, look, man, life's going to be rough. Okay. You're just going to have to, you know, like deal with it. And instead of, you know, like finding a way to change the way you feel, change your situation so that you feel better. Right. You know, um, you know, and, it, and it's, I'm willing to work with the guy as long as it's almost like, you know, you're willing, if you got a, uh, I wouldn't care if the guy was a hundred pounds. If I see that he's going to stand up for himself and fight, I'll be right there with them, and I don't care what the odds are. Right. Well, I'll do the same thing with somebody that's struggling with a disease or of addiction. Right. Because if if they're gonna be in the fight, uh, they've got my support. You know, not I don't necessarily want to sit there in the mess with them if they're not in this, if they don't want to get into the solution. Well, you know, we had a saying in prison. Um, I'm not gonna stand up and fight for somebody that won't fight for themselves. Yep. You know. What um, ends up happening is you end up you end up going it, that that'll bleed into your life. Yeah, well, you end up paying a price for somebody that won't yep. pay the price for yourself. So yep. they, so in prison, um, how many guys you think are in prison behind drug addiction uh, on in one way or another? When I was in, I would say ninety percent. 90% yeah. behind, I mean, what it, what it was, was it start out petty, you know, 
it would start out petty for the most part, man. It was just thieves and, and, and addicts. Yeah. That, that's, and either the addicts were thieves or the thieves were addicts. You had your one-offs. Like I was a one-off. I was in there for, for a DUI with some injury, yeah. right? Yeah. Or, or, a, or a bar fight that turned into a hate crime. And, you know, a lot of the guys, like I had a lot of sense, so a lot of the guys with murders in prison are usually uh, drug-related, you know, robbery, murder, yeah, uh, you know, kidnap, robbery type, you know, life sentence behind killing people behind trying to get money for drugs. Yeah, or they weren't in the right frame of mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's that's a lot of people. So I would, I would see it. And that was one of the reasons why, you know, on, on three of the yards, we had a, we had a no, we, we had a no use policy. We just, yeah. we were just saying, but we were also looked up as in like, we weren't like prison heads. We were more, we were like, you know, we were actual heads. Yeah. from, yeah. And so we were able to kind of help some of the, and you know, people still did it. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. You know, I'm not going to say like, you know, no, skinheads don't use in prison. That's fucking, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's been uh, good chatting with you. So, you know, I'm, and I'm got an amazing story. And I, I'm sure we could go on for hours and hours because it's uh, everybody's story in life is pretty deep. But, um, you know, I got to say, it's been a pleasure meeting you, getting to know you and riding with you and just, uh, calling you my friend you know um and uh that's that goes both ways uh you're you're definitely you're somebody that i am uh, you know that 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 this life is blessed that our our, our paths cross you know my, you've definitely enriched my life and uh and vice versa you're you're, yeah. you're a good friend mitch and i appreciate mm -hmm. it. thank you uh you know is there anything you'd like to say to folks out there watching um you know any it's anything. Not yeah, I mean, so, so for so, uh, yeah, I mean, like for me, um, life's taught me this is is that um, it I I've learned to recognize peace, man, and be and be okay with it. Like I don't need to cause drama in order to feel comfortable. That was yeah. that was a hard one for me. Um, I needed a little bit of drama in order for me to feel comfortable because I dealt with, I, I dealt with very high stress, dangerous situations for a long time. Like right. I needed that to feel normal. And, and what it ended up doing was these, these people that I loved in my life, it, 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 it ended up push like pushing everybody out in the way and stuff. Cause yeah. they, they didn't want the chaos. So right. if you're, if you're, if you're getting out, if you're in that, like, drama or, or high pace, high stress thing, you know, uh, just being able to recognize that peace is okay. If, if you're bored, you might not be bored. You, you actually might be at peace. Yeah. It's just unrecognizable to you. Right. Um, so you don't need to create the chaos. You don't need to go and burn everything to the ground to then build it up again, because that's what you've always done. Right. Um, you know, and then, you know, in, in closing that, like, no matter how long it takes, don't ever stop trying to like, just better yourself just a little bit at a time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I think it's important. I think it's important that like, I'm never done. I'm, ne I'm always a work in progress. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, and I, and I'm nowhere near perfect. <laughs> yeah. One day at a time. Right. One day at a time, man. Sometimes one minute at a time. And you know what? I give myself a break because I'm not even supposed to be here. That's right. Cool. I love you, buddy. It's been chatting with you, and uh, maybe we can do it again. But um, I think uh, it's been great. No, nah, it's been great. Thanks for the opportunity, Mitch. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on. Yeah, really. absolutely. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. And do it hard. Yes. Hold on.